Okay, we've gone ahead and completed the setup process for the RTN 66U. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and proceed to show you how to complete the actual process to get connected to the internet, as well as to enable your wireless SSID networks and go ahead and make adjustments to the actual administrator password, as well as to the wireless SSID network password information. So now that we've gone ahead and shown you how to connect the internet service providers uh, cap uh, cable connection or DSL connection to the WAN port on the router, we're going to go ahead and complete the setup process uh, via a wirelessly enabled PC. Now for our purposes, we're going to be utilizing a G53 notebook with a wireless connection. As we previously noticed, no software is required for the setup process. So at this point, all we need to do is make sure that our 66U is physically turned on in terms of the actual power button on the back of the unit enabled into the on position and two, that we actually have the RJ45 cable connected to the actual WAN port on the RTN 66U router. From there, all we need to do is head over to the actual wireless network manager and look for the ASUS SSID. Now this SSID will show that it's actually an unsecured and 802.11n SSID or wireless network. So we're going to go ahead and double click on it. It will ask us if we want to set up our network. At this point, we're going to go ahead and proceed with clicking OK. From here, it will actually ask you to go ahead and type in the PIN code that's directly underneath the actual RTN 66U. Once you've gone ahead and defined that PIN, you want to go ahead and click Next. It will then ask you to please define the actual name for your SSID or your wireless network. Now keep in mind that while it will go ahead and successfully pass this information over to our ASUS uh, GUI uh, that we're going to be going to a little bit and a little bit later in this video, that uh, for these purposes right now you could go ahead and define anything you want because we will change it later. Now, it's also gone ahead and automatically populated a secure password. Now, if you feel comfortable with actually keeping this information, you can entirely store this um, and maintain both the actual network name as well as the security key. And the benefit is that this information will be automatically passed over to the network manager within Windows to allow you to go ahead and get online successfully. So from here, we're going to go ahead and click Next. It will then pass this information over to the RTN 66U and shortly will then be connected directly to the unit. Now, as we can see here, it's gone ahead and successfully completed the setup. Now, if you want to go ahead and keep this information in terms of your wireless network uh, password, you can go ahead and then do a screen, uh, screen capture of this. We're gonna go ahead and save this as an actual home network. And we're also gonna use our snipping tool to save this. So from here, we could go ahead and save At this point, you've gone ahead and completed the initial setup process to allow us to speak directly to the RTN 66U. From here, all we're going to need to do is actually launch any one of the current browsers that are available on the market. We fully support Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Opera, and Mozilla Firefox. For the purposes of this overview, I'm going to be using Internet Explorer. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. So we can see here, it's gone ahead and taken us directly to the actual GUI and the setup process for our RTN 66U. So here, all we need to do is click Next. It will then ask us to go ahead and define an administrator password. Now, this password is specifically for the administrator portion of the actual router. This is important in terms that you want to define a safe and secure password because having access to the administrator console allows you to make adjustments to any security parameter settings as well as enable more advanced levels of functionality that are offered on the RTN 66U. So currently I'm going to go ahead and use a basic password admin but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use a randomly generated password and then go ahead and change that. From there, it will detect our internet service connection. And as we can see that the previously populated information that we had defined when we first set up the actual RTN 66U through Windows has been populated here. Now, at this point, I would strongly advise that you go ahead and actually rename your SSIDs to the corresponding frequencies, or what's referred to as the actual bands. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and call this my 66U 2.4 gigahertz. 
and I'm going to go ahead and keep that actual secure password that's already been created. And here, I'm, for the 5 gigahertz, I'm going to call this 66U 5 gigahertz. And hit apply. At that point, it will then go ahead and automatically update this information directly to the RTN66U and reconfigure our wireless network IDs to have new ID names. Now it's let us know that the actual SSID has been changed, so this may require us to actually reconnect to it. So we're going to have to go down and go ahead and select now 66U 2.4 gigahertz. And previously that security key that we referenced, we're going to go ahead and now bring it up. This will allow us to go ahead and connect. And we can see here that now this information has been successfully stored. We'll ask us to go ahead and con uh, select our actual network configuration. So once again, we'll pick home network. And at this point, we could go ahead and now save our successfully readjusted and secured wireless network information by going once again to our snipping tool and saving this. At this point, all we need to do is click Next, click Finish, and we will be successfully transported to the actual finalized GUI for RTN66U. At this point, you've actually gone ahead and successfully completed the setup process of not only getting you connected yourself to the internet, but as well as safely and securely setting up your actual wireless network IDs. Now from here, all we're going to do is open up a secondary page go to an actual home page. So we're going to go to msn.com and we can see that this is loaded up without any issues. So we can confirm that we have successfully connected to the internet. Now moving back over to the actual primary GUI page, there's a lot of information that's supplied here. In the GUI page, one, we have our actual connection signal that's confirmed as us being connected to the internet and we can see our corresponding information. Two, the security tab and wireless network manager tab is letting us know that for the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bands that we currently have our security protocol enabled as well as it lists to us our actual passkey information. In addition to that, we can see the number of clients that we have connected by clicking the client tab. It shows us that we currently have one system connected. And then lastly, we have our portions for USB attached storage, which currently there are no devices. Now, as I previously noted before, we're going to want to now go back and change the administrator logon password to something more secure. So let's first go ahead and jump onto that. All we're going to have to do is type in PC Tools password. So we'll do a search to take us over to PC Tools Random Password Generator. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pick 12 characters, include punctuation, and generate that password. I'm going to go ahead and copy that head back over to the actual GUI, and from there, go to administration. Under administration, we're gonna to go to system and enter in the new password. This will allow us to ensure that we have a much safer and more secure administrator password. So this will help to minimize any type of security attacks that could potentially be exploited on your router. We're also gonna go ahead and set the correct time zone and hit apply. This will now be updated directly over to the RTN66U. Now keep in mind that if you want to go ahead and change and have a different randomly generated password, you could also go ahead and create another one for your wireless network IDs, depending on how you want to approach the security for your router. So once again, we're going to head over back to network map. And we can see here that the passkey information is present for 2.4 and for 5 gigahertz. And assuming that we wanted to maybe have a different password, same thing, we would go ahead, go back, generate a new key, copy it, and we could go ahead and then enter that in for 2.4 gigahertz, as well as for five gigahertz. Now keep in mind that because we're updating the SSID that we're currently connected to on wireless, that we're gonna go ahead and need to re-enter this key to once again reconnect.
So as you can see here, it shows that we're successfully unable to connect. So we're gonna go ahead and right click it, go to properties, and we're going to change the previously stored password. And now it will allow us to go ahead and successfully reconnect. And we're gonna go ahead and change the password for that five gigahertz band as well. At this point, we've essentially now successfully completed setup for the RTN66U. Now keep in mind that there are some other points of consideration um, once you've successfully completed up your router and verified that you're connected to the internet. In many situations, right after this, I would advise that you check the actual performance of your internet line. So for many internet service providers, they provide a rating for the service that you're currently paying for. So as an example, if we go to Comcast and we go to internet, we can confirm and see that they have a number of different packages available, going down from 1.5 megabits to 105 megabits. So what you would want to go ahead and do to check the functionality of your RTN66U in relation to the connection that you now have on your Wi-Fi enabled device is head over to a site like Speedtest. Now keep in mind that with wireless, there are going to be varying levels of performance due to range, uh, the band that you're on, interference, and a number of other variables at play. But under optimal situations, you should get close to between 80 to 90% of the performance that you would have uh, when utilizing a hardwired connection in regards to the overall throughput performance. So from here, in our offices, we generally have available to us about 30 megabits down to as much as 40 megabits down and about 30 megabits up to 40 megabits up. This will vary depending on network load that we have throughout the day. So what we're going to go ahead and do is now knowing that information is run a speed test and confirm to see if we're in that approximate range of performance. So as we can see, our ping rate is very solid. And we can see here that we've gotten approximately about 50 megabits down and are up of approximately uh, 20 megabits. And this is about normal in terms of the expectation for a 2.4 gigahertz connection, uh, depending, as I said, on range, uh, interference, and a number of other factors. Uh, I generally always advise that you run the test twice to go ahead and check performance. Now keep in mind that if you had a higher throughput adapter, you could go ahead and improve the actual performance of that Wi-Fi connection. Okay, now that we've gone ahead and completed this, we can do one thing in terms of helping to extend the performance. We could head over back over to the network manager and we could actually change the operating bandwidth to a higher bandwidth. Now keep in mind that this could potentially actually take up other bandwidth available from other devices that could be connected. But if this is your primary Wi-Fi enabled device and you want to ensure the best bandwidth possible in terms of the highest throughput, this would be a setting that you could change in terms of going to channel bandwidth, selecting 2040 and hitting apply. At this point, we can head back over to speed test and rerun. You can see overall now that we have an improvement relative to the actual throughput that's being offered to us. So lastly from here, the next step for us is going to go ahead and go over to pingtest.com, which is going to allow us to overall check the line quality that we currently have in terms of actually jitter and the ping and an overall calibration in terms of the quality of the internet service connection that's being provided to us currently. If this checks out without any issues, we've pretty much completed all the 
uh, initial portions of successfully getting yourself online safely and securely uh, making adjustments to your administrator logon as well as adjustments to your wireless network keys and verifying that you're successfully connected to the internet with adequate throughput. So from here we're going to go over to pingtest.net and go ahead and begin the test. Overall, we can see that we have a solid line quality of A with a ping time of 19 milliseconds and a jitter of 10 milliseconds. So overall, quite solid. So at this point, we've successfully completed the setup of our RTN66U.